Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel and uh, we're going to address something that a lot of people are having problems with and that's I think the number one issue when wanting to decode digital modes on a PC with Windows and using an SDR. You know when you're using an external radio, a desktop receiver or a portable you can always drive the audio with a cable through the input of the microphone or the line in for the computer and that is an easy way to connect but on a SDR it has to be done in a virtual way now why because first of all this is FLDG notice how the audio right now reacts with my voice this is what you see here this is my voice why because what you need to understand about software that decodes digital modes on shortwave and on radio in general, what does your radio give as information? It gives audio, something you can hear. It doesn't give straight digital modes. It doesn't give any connection, direct connection, unless it's a very modern radio, any direct digital connection. When you put that audio cable from your portable or desktop to the computer, it's audio frequencies. You're sending sound through that cable. And all the software that's used to decode digital modes uses the sound. It's the sound that works. Because it's like the old days of the modems. A 300 baud modem would take sound, transfer it into digital, and then back into sound. That's the way it was working, and that's the way digital modes work on shortwave and on radio in general. It's audio being converted into digital, so your software, like FLDG, just listens to audio. It listens to the sound. So that's why you have to have the sound go through the software. So let me go back down here. How do you drive an SDR sound into a software like FLDG. Whatever SDR you're using, this method is universal. It doesn't matter what software you're using, what SDR you're using, it will work the same way on every single thing. Because your SDR, obviously, there's some audio coming out. But you need to drive it into the software, to the code. So, how does it work? Well, if you have it easy, and that's with some computers, you will have something, so go into your search in Windows, I'm here in, in Windows 11, but Windows 10 works the same, and go into the control panel, just type control panel to go into the control panel. Here, you'll go into sound, and you're gonna choose in the sound, the recording tab. In here, you have a couple of possibilities. If it's easy for you, First of all, right click in that panel. Make sure there's a check mark with show disabled device and show disconnected device. Here, you might see something that's gonna make it easy. It's called stereo mix. If you see stereo mix, what you need to do is click on it and make sure that it is enabled because by default on many computers, it's disabled. So you want to have it enabled. So basically, the audio will have this little icon here, and when you right-click on it, it's going to say enable. You want to enable stereo mix. That is making it easy. If you have that, you've got it easier than a lot of people. If you don't have stereo mix, what do you do? Well, your next choice is to download, and I'll put the link to it. VB audio software, which is virtual audio cable that you can download and install on your computer. Now you see it, there's one version for Mac and there's a version here on top for the Windows uh, system. You're gonna install that, <coughs> sorry, you're gonna install that on your PC. It's a free software, it's donationware as you see. So you can give a couple of bucks if you're happy with it. Once it's installed, it's going to add another layer to your PC. Once you restart and you click the speaker icon, 
you'll notice that when you go to the speaker information or if you right click or go to the control panel we were earlier cable input VB audio virtual cable would exist now so what does that mean that means now you have what it takes to give a link to your software and that link you need to make it now together so I'll post the link by the way to this software you can download and install and this is going to give you what's missing if you don't have stereo mix if you have stereo mix don't download this it's useless you don't need it now once that is done what do you do well first of all if you have stereo mix what's cool is that stereo mix is a virtual cable that works out of the box all you'll have to do is go into the software in FLDG and go into the um, file and into the um, sorry not file I'm sorry configure and you'll go into the config dialog the configuration dialog you're gonna go down into sound card and to sound card you're gonna go to devices here you're gonna choose stereo mix for capture stereo mix for playback or whatever depending on what you want to have support so audio stereo mix for capture you can choose your speakers for playback that's one thing you can do once that is done you click save what's gonna happen with that is that now you're gonna have a direct link so for example if I go here because it's already enabled here if I go to my SDR and tune something that would have a tone, let me just uh, click something like uh, here. So here we go, we got a tone. When that is properly working, that tone is gonna create something that is visible in the waterfall. So here, sorry, I'm gonna put the volume a little higher on my software. put it down but did you notice look at the straight line here this is the tone that I put the volume higher it's hearing it it's hearing it through stereo mix or whatever device in my case it's the console now there's another thing if you don't have the um, the stereo mix and you have to choose something else then of course it's the virtual cable now in Windows 10 or Windows 11, what you'll want to do is make sure that the output, so you can right click and go to the sound settings, and you wanna make sure that the output to audio is VB audio virtual cable. You'll choose that. Now, what you'll notice is that immediately there's no more sound in your speakers. Why? Because the sound's going through this virtual cable. And that's why there's no more sound on your speakers. Don't worry, it doesn't matter, okay? Because there is sound that's created virtually. Now, you notice how that worked. I'm gonna put this volume high here. And now I'm using what's, the, what's called the VB audio cable uh, in my sound output. Cable, VB audio virtual cable. So I got my digital going, for example, and I have VB audio cable that's done. What I'm gonna go is do in uh, the FLDG software, I'm going to go to the configure and I'm gonna go to configure dialog again. And sound card and devices, but this time I capture from VB audio port. And look at the line that's now back on my display at the bottom here. Do you see the line? That line is the same audio we were hearing earlier, but now it's virtually created. In your computer, if you configure, you can also do playback. You can say playback, I wanna have through a specific output. And you can choose whatever you want and then click save. 
On some computers, that playback is actually going to have you hear the sound. But if it doesn't, it might be possible that you're kind of in the dark. You'll see it in the display. You won't hear anything. It depends on the computer that you have. Now, if you see that and you see traces of your digital signal through the VB or virtual cable, that will actually mean now you can decode something. Now, you're saying, okay, but can we kind of decode something for real here? Okay, let's check it out. Let's go to whatever I can find, because that's the thing. Can I find something to decode? Uh, let's go to, so yesterday there was 84, 8415 or 16. Is there anything here that I could decode? I'm gonna just zoom in, zoom in a little more. So nothing much there. Um, so there's a Morse code signal here, 8424. I'm gonna try that. So 8424, my volume's high enough. If I go here, you should see that there's Morse code. So dots and dashes being on the display here. We're going to change mode, go to CW. And we're going to, because that's what you want to do, you want to match the signal. So CW, I'm gonna match the center of that signal here. And we're gonna make sure that the volume is high enough for it to work. And so we're at, uh, whoops, 8424, yep. We'll go higher in volume a little more. So here there's more volume. And here you see that there's something being sent. And as the words per minute probably get fixed or so from the e v it's not vm but uh, it's, uh probably should decode something like uh, the greek um svo which is what is being sent so you know morse code is kind of touchy so it's not always fantastically well let me just go down a little bit here, 15 words per minute. Anything is gonna work better. Here we go, EVO, on the, so T, so VVV usually was what sent out. SVO, which didn't show up. But you get a drift when it works. That's, that's one thing that it does. Um, one of the things we can try here, and that's what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try the lower signal. Sorry for that crappy, uh, that crappy uh, way of showing anything. So here is a little one. Um, for three two. So let's see what that one has. So this is some kind of Morse code too. Uh, maybe we can try. Well, actually, what we're gonna do? We're gonna try fourteen, fourteen, oh seven oh. Do this here because the 14070 is PSK. And we're going to see if there's something here. But there's some TTY here at the top. So, whatever happens, we're going to try a digital mode. So, here there's obviously some RTTY. We're going to try RTTY here. here we go. So, let's go to op mode. Let's go to see two lines, two red lines, and you see that there are two here. So click on to match. Let's see if it works. And, oh, there's one here that's really strong. Try to get here at the bottom. There we go. We have six. Oh, thank you. Let's
this here. And let's go a little further here because I see that there's some, uh, I don't know if there's some kind of uh, contest going on or something, but uh, it's interesting to see that we do have some OTTY here. And let's see if it brings out anything else. And you'll see it appear here. So whatever appears in RTTY in the frequency range, it's going to appear down here on the display. And you can match it with the lines. Whatever mode it is, you'll see the lines are not the same size. So, you know, if I go into PSK, look at uh, oops, op mode, go into PSK, PSK31, look how small the lines are. You're going to match that small line with the signal uh, that is available. So, uh, I know it's not a convincing <laughs> demonstration, but it's, um, it's a start. Um, check out what I just showed you and try it and see what happens. And remember, what you see at the bottom here is audio, okay? This is the audio coming out of your radio in some way. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, thank you for watching.